What's going on everybody? Jake Dalton here again. If you're new to the channel, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Check out my other content. Getting into some fun stuff and uh, making some different content as well for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. So make sure you subscribe and uh, here we go. So this video is going to be about what to pack when backpacking. So I just recently took my first trip backpacking. It was about 29.6 miles, almost 30 miles, and it was in two days. We stayed the night overnight and uh, one night, and it was super fun. Um, the trail that we did was the Rim to Reno Trail. It's up in Tahoe, and it actually is really only about 23 or 4 miles, I believe, but we added a couple extra miles just to get to Relay Peak and I think Mount Hooten or Huffton or something like that. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, but uh, we took about a five mile extra loop and um, that made it about 30 miles. So I'm gonna go over some of the things that I packed. Again, not a professional, but it was my first trip. I had a blast and I, when I posted about it on my Instagram, I had a couple people reach out and ask what I packed and just some information about the trip. So I figured I'd make a video on it. So to start out, let's go with the backpack first. So I went back and forth for about 45 minutes to an hour at the store. Um, checking out between the Osprey and uh, Gregory. I ended up going with the Gregory, the Baltoro, uh, 65 liter. And for me, it just felt like it gave me a little more support in my back and it felt like I would be able to adjust the pack where it was just really comfortable for me. I like the straps on the backpack a little bit better as well. Um, I did go with a size small and upgraded to size medium straps because I just felt that the size small backpack was adjustable to my body and then the straps was, um, I went with a medium because that helped just with, I'm a little more bulky up top and it helped kind of reach and get the, the straps kind of under my armpits a little bit more and just overall felt really comfortable. It did also come with um, a go bag in the, in the center console in the big pack of it. That way you can set up camp and you don't want to take your entire pack up to the summit. You can just take that little go bag and take it right out of your backpack and head up to the peak and then come back down to the summit and come back down. So another part is there's a built-in rain cover. So if it starts raining, I just zip open the top, pull it over and attach it to the bottom that covers my entire backpack. Those two things came with the backpack. The Osprey it did not. You have to buy those things separate and then put them in your bag. So I felt like that was a pretty, a pretty good thing to have for this backpack. Next, I'm gonna go over some of the food and the water items that I took. So for food, I just took the backcountry, those meals, the, you know, airtight meals basically, and you just boil water, pour it in there, stir it up, let it sit for anywhere between like six and 15 minutes, depending on what one you have. To be honest, I really don't mind those at all. I think they're pretty good. They're pretty quick, they're really easy, and I can fit a lot of those into my little bear canister. So, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But the backcountry, the food is really good. There's a couple different brands out there. Um, if you watch my last channel about the actual hike, I do show some of those, so make sure you go check that one out. So that was pretty much the food that I took for meals. I did take three um, protein bars, which ended up probably not being enough. My crew that I was with, they had some snacks as well, and I took some from them, so definitely, going to take more snacks along the way. I thought three protein bars was gonna be pretty good, but I also didn't realize we were really going about 30 miles and it was gonna be um, a lot of elevation change and just a pretty good workout. So probably more snacks were needed. As for water, I had a three liter hydro pack in my backpack. So I started with that pretty full, all the way full. And then I had two one liter bottles on the side of my pack which are plastic because those are lighter. I don't, they're not insulated, which to me is fine. I just wanted light. You know, when you're packing 40 or 50 pounds on your back for 30 miles, you wanna go as light as you can with everything that you can. So total of five liters of water. I did take a MSR trail shot water filter. And again, I'll get into that a little bit more. Um, we use that once you run out of water and you hit a water creek or, um, or a river or whatever, you use the water filter to refill everything. And that water filter, it's the MSR Trail Shot. I, I never used it, I was nervous about it. I heard good things about it from the guys at REI that I bought it from. I was really surprised to see how simple, easy, light, small, and just overall how great this product works. I can't, you know, I, I went in 30 to 45 seconds, had it in the water, was filling it up, and it filled a one liter bottle in maybe a minute which isn't too bad for, it's basically a little handheld pump 
and you, you put the little hose into the water and you use your hand to pump with the little squeezy. There's a plastic part on one side and a pump on the other. And just with one hand, pump up your water bottle or pump the water through the line into your water bottle and it filters. It says 99.99% of all bacteria. So for me, it was my decision between that and a bigger one, which is um, a little faster, fills up things a little more, but quite a bit more uh, weight to it. It's a lot bigger, so it's harder to store in your pack, and it's a little more complicated. It's, it makes filling water a lot faster, but again, going by weight and uh, convenience for, for this little trail shot, I think it was definitely worth the money. I think it was either 40 or $50, and I'm telling you, I was 100% happy with it, and I, I would definitely recommend you guys trying it. All right, moving on to more of the gear. Like I said, the MSR trail shot for the water filter was fantastic. Next, we've got my Big Zip Evo from Platypus. This is the, the little uh, water pack that I went with. I really had no issues with it. It's three liters, they make one. I think they make one, one and a half, all the way to three, and uh, they not sure if they make more than three. This thing worked great. You've got a lever on the mouthpiece that you can turn, that you can turn to make the water come through, and then you can lock it. So that way you're not losing any water, it's not dripping out. Um, water's really, really, really important on these hikes and you don't want to be wasting water if, if you don't have to. So really like this pack, just fits right nice into my actual go bag in my backpack. So if I do take my pack off and just take my go bag to the summit, um, I will be able to take this if I want to. Obviously I can take it out and put it in my pack as well, but it fits in there. It's got a little buckle that kind of goes through the top of this. This basically just goes on here slides and seals it so this way your water won't leak and then you hook your buckle through this and it sits in your pack so it's not kind of weighing down it's held up more on your mid back some of the other gear was my headlamp i just went with a petzl it's I think 300 lumens super small pretty light worked really well one cool thing about it was that the the light part of it when I put it in my tent I was wondering um, if a bear comes through or something happens and I need to get to my headlamp really quick so I can see what's going on how am I going to see it well I actually didn't know this but in front where the light is there's a glow-in-the-dark part feature basically which is really cool I don't even know if they really promote that on their stuff I didn't even notice it but I did when I took it off at nighttime and put it in my tent there was a small glow-in-the-dark ring which makes that really nice. I now can see my headlamp, grab it, and get to it pretty quick if I need to. Some of the small items that I didn't pack of gear because the group I was with had some of it. One was kind of a poop shovel. Um, some other small items that I did pack were a compass on my backpack. It just clips on there, and it also shows the temperature, which is kind of nice. So it's just a little two-in-one uh, gizmo that I like to take because it also has a wind chill factor on there, so if you know it's going to get down to 40, 30 degrees, um, if there is going to be a wind chill, you'll be able to see kind of what the temperature will feel like. So you can just be cautious of, you know, where you're picking your sleeping spots and what you need to bring. So that was something small that I picked up. Going back to the some, some of the things I didn't pack was sunscreen. I really kind of wish I brought some sunscreen because if you are going to get the sun beating on you all day long, I didn't really have any issues, but I still wish I would have brought some just for my face at least. Um, and bug spray was another thing that I didn't bring before we were going to bed. We were trying to play some cards and if you have your light on, we're about 11 miles from anyone out there basically, so it's definitely full of bugs. Uh, so some bug spray would have been nice, although I, when I went to sleep I didn't really wake up. You know, I get eaten up more at the lake when we go camping than I did on the trip, but I did buy some just in case. Another thing I didn't take was hand wipes, which this is pretty essential. <laughs> you probably want to use them before you eat and after you go to the bathroom. The group I was with, they had some, so I borrowed some. I did pick some up after. Um, that's just one of the things I kind of learned on my own. Another thing I just picked up is a very small towel. Folds up and it's super, super small, very light. You can just stuff it in your pack, leave it there, and kind of forget about it until you need it. What I used this for was to clean out my was to clean out my stove. So basically, once you boil water, there's still some overlaying water that stays in there, just a couple of drops. 
and I like I wanted a towel to clean it out because I've heard that they can rust if you just leave the water in there and don't dry them out. So I use that and you can use it if you're sweating, if you need to dry your hands. It's just nice to kind of have a towel, especially one so small. Some more things that kind of go into gear is survival stuff. We did take a first aid kit, certain things that you can make your own. You can buy some big, small, in the middle. Um, I went with a pretty simple one uh, just because the group I was with, they had some stuff as well. Other parts of the survival aspect of this was uh, bear spray. I did take a canister of bear spray and attach it to my pack. And that's really just in case you do come across a bear, maybe with cubs who's going to be aggressive and you can kind of protect yourself and just get away. And so that is always something safe. I kept it by me when I was sleeping. I had it right on my pack where I could reach it from both hands. And uh, so really just kind of a backup. The other two, more just for survival or you're stuck out there and you need them. Self-defense, I don't really think they're going to do too much. <laughs> if I'm getting mauled by a mountain lion or something, it's probably going to be pretty hard to pull out my knife and be able to stab my way out of it. But if that situation does arise, at least you have them. So the first one's gonna be my pocket knife. This is just a super cheapo, 13 bucks or something like that I got at a local gun, st or a gun store. Um, but it is pretty nice. It's super thin and I really like it for that reason. It fits in my pocket. I don't really feel it and know it's there and it's easy to open and uh, a sharp blade. It's new, so it's definitely pretty sharp. Um, but just because it's so thin, it's, you hardly feel it. The other one I did attach to my backpack. It is a Benchmade. It's actually a, a really, really nice knife. Um, I did, it did come with the paracord and I wrapped it through here the way you're supposed to. So worst case scenario, if you need, you have a bunch of paracord and you also have a really, really sharp knife. Now you have obviously the serrated blade on this side and a regular on this side. Super sturdy, super strong knife, super, super sharp. Really, this would come in handy if, um, again, worst case scenario, you're stuck out there, you're cutting some trees, um, you need to cut some firewood, you need to make some kindling, really anything like that. So those are the three things for kind of protection slash, slash survival that I did take. So some of the other gear is going to be a bear box, bear canister, whatever you want to say. This is Backpackers Cash. Catchy? Cash? Not really sure. So this is basically just to help save the bears and kind of save you. Uh, what you do is you put anything that has a scent, toothbrush, toothpaste, if you wear deodorant on these trips, um, food items, snacks, everything we packed full of food, I tried to keep away from my backpack and away from myself. I would store it in here. It has a locking mechanism that bears cannot get into. And you basically lock it with these two little levers. You push this down and this comes off. It's pretty big, you can store everything in here and it makes it just a little bit safer when you're out camping. You put all your stuff in this at nighttime and I stored this probably 60, probably 60 or 70 feet away from our campground and they were all by themselves. So if bears do smell the food in here, they go to this, they can't get into it, they won't eat all your food, they don't get sick and it kind of helps save the bears and will also kind of keep them away from coming to your camp. So this is pretty cool. Very big, but very smart thing to have, especially in areas full of bears and other animals. Moving on to some sleeping gear. I bought the Nemo Hornet 2 tent. And I did that because REI had a sale and this tent was almost a pound and a half lighter than the tent I was looking at. It was twice as expensive, but this tent was a pound and a half lighter and it was quite a bit larger. I'll put the tent right here so you guys can see it and some of the specs. Really enjoyed this tent. Obviously when it's staked out, it's pretty spacious in there for a tent. It is a two person tent and a three season tent. I really enjoyed it. Zips on both sides so you can decide what side you wanna get out and use as access. Or if you have two people in there, you each have a way to exit, which was really nice. The next thing is my sleep pad. I actually got this for my birthday from my brother-in-law uh, and my sister. This is a climate, comfortable, rugged, lightweight sleeping pad. So it's made by climate and um, super, super easy. Basically, you just blow it up. It says you can blow it up within like 15 breaths. It doesn't take long and it actually is a lifesaver. So much, much more comfortable sleeping on this. You can see how small it is, pretty light and fits in your pack 
Uh, definitely recommend sleeping on either a pad or something like that, but I do think the inflatables are definitely the way to go. I've had some smaller pads before. They're pretty big and hard to fold up, and I actually thought this was more comfortable. When you're done, you just twist the knob, the air comes out, and you can fold it up and actually squeeze the air out, and um, super easy to get back in. Next is going to be my pillow. This is called the Pillow X or Pillow 10, not really sure. Also by climate, as you can tell, very small. And when you open it up out of the bag, it's actually pretty big. Probably almost the size of a normal pillow, depending on the size of your pillows. So pretty close. And like I said, right here, you just turn the knob. And there you go. Got a pretty big pillow. And then I would just throw a t-shirt over this. And the only thing I'll say about this is I did, because it has these little grooves, I had to find a way to get comfortable with that. And so these grooves kind of create spaces for your head and your neck. And once you figure out how to lay in it, it's super comfortable. I had no issues with it. Um, just put a t-shirt, like I said, over it and very comfortable. And also very small, very lightweight, easy to fold up and easy to put away as well. And for my sleeping bag, I have the Marmot or Marmot. I don't really know how to pronounce it, but it's the Trestles Elite Eco. I believe it's a 20 degree sleeping bag. Like I said, got down to 40. I was in the pants. I actually slept in the pants. I was just so tired and uh, a t-shirt and I was actually pretty pretty warm, almost too warm. And for that one, I believe it's down. And what you want to do with that is it compacts to pretty small in your pack. But when you're not packing it and you're not using it, um, they actually have a pretty nice big cinch bag that you let it sit in that. So when I got home, I actually opened it up, let it kind of air out and let it like re-fluff basically and then you have this really big bag that it just kind of sits in because you don't want it compact it just kind of kills the sleeping bag worked really great for me other than that pretty much packing clothes this can vary depending on what kind of trip you're taking right so whether you're going on a cold winter trip a hot summer trip for us it was in the 80s to 90s so it was definitely pretty warm and then it got down to about 40 at night Pretty big difference, but I went with these 511 Tack Light pants and I did wear those the entire time. They're pretty light, but they're also fairly warm at nighttime. But I, like I said, it was 90 degrees and hiking and then I would have a t-shirt on during the day and I was totally fine. Obviously you're gonna be sweating, but I'd rather have pants because I want them to go over my boots, which leads me to another 511 boot. I, I went with the high ankle boots I like these for the outdoors because it allows less sand and debris to get into my shoe and especially if you're wearing pants you can cover the boots up and you just really don't have to worry about things getting inside your boot which is just really annoying and also can cause blisters on your feet. For socks I went with normal just cotton socks, high ankle socks. Um, the two others I was going, I was hiking with, I don't know if it was their shoes. Uh, not use of their feet as much or their socks, they, will, they wore wool. Uh, socks which are supposed to be good for hiking but they both got uh, they both got blisters all over their feet and I did not my feet definitely were sore were very close to getting blisters but I was the only one who did not get any blisters going with shirts I just went with all kind of um, wicking material so basically I went with a t-shirt and a long sleeve to start the day because the mornings are a little chilly and then I would take the long sleeve off. I would have just the t-shirt for the rest of the day. At nighttime, I did bring a small puffer jacket that I wore, and you can see this in the video that I made as well, and that just folds right up and I put on the outside of my pack. And then I also had two pairs, um, or two separate hats, one regular baseball ball cap, and the other, other from 511 is just the regular kind of outdoorsy cap that has the Rim, the brim that goes all the way around so it kind of protects my neck and a little bit more of my face and some of my shoulders. For a camera all I brought was my phone and then I did have a G-Shock watch that I packed to wear. Those are kind of the less uh, important items other than my phone was important. The two I was with they did have a GPS and also um, a device that basically uses GPS to send a signal letting everybody know that we are good because a lot of the time you're out of cell service when you're hiking. So guys, that is pretty much it for the video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. 
hopefully this helps you guys kind of uh, get into backpacking if you're not. Like I said, this was my first trip, definitely not going to be my last. Obviously, uh, there's a lot to get and a lot you can take. And I'm thinking about doing how I pack my backpack and also a gear video as well. So let me know in the comments if something that is something you guys would be interested in watching. I hope you guys learned a little bit from this video and you guys are able to use it and it was some useful information. But anyway, that's about it. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys subscribe. Also, all my Patreons out there, thank you so much. You guys definitely help out and uh, allow me to create some more content. So. If you guys haven't seen that, it's in the link below. Check it out. You get some early access to the YouTube videos and some cool behind the scenes content. So again, thank you guys and we will see you guys in the next one.